Big news updates, everybody. How's it going? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. At the end of August, I made a video, a little, a little jabby jab at the FCC, talking about the baud rate limits that we have as amateur radio operators and how I... I was done with it, but obviously many other people were done with it too. And the ARRL, the American Radio Relay League, they never let go of this bone either, and they've been pursuing the FCC to make this change for well over a decade. Well, good news. The FCC released a document discussing this topic and has said that they will make a vote deciding on whether or not the baud rate changes will go away. With FCC I document dated October 25th, 2023, elimination of baud rate limitation in applicable amateur radio bands. Real high level page here, background, let's read it. This report and order if adopted would eliminate the baud rate limitation in certain amateur radio bands and instead set a bandwidth limit on those bands, right? So give us the width of the space that we can use and let us decide how to use it. Good. These rule changes would incentivize innovation and experimentation in the amateur radio bands by providing amateur radio servant licensees with the flexibility to use modern digital emissions. Lots of new digital modes coming out all the time. We've already talked recently about VAR AC. VAR AC could definitely utilize this removal of the baud rate limit. The change would enable the amateur radio community to operate more efficiently including in support of emergency situations when appropriate. That is true, as we'll talk about further in this document. The further notice of proposed rulemaking, if adopted, would seek comments on changes to other amateur radio bands that have a baud rate limitation. Very good. So what is the report to do? Well, this whole topic is about removing the baud rate limitation and then implementing a 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth limitation, right? So we got to get rid of one and we got to add another limitation on. Now, this was a crazy topic. I had people reaching out to me in email. I got direct messages on Discord, on Twitter, X now, and I even got phone calls unsolicited phone calls about people that are extremely passionate about this topic. And while I think I am wearing my opinion on my sleeve on this one, I want the rate limit gone. I now have a much better understanding of those that want to keep the rate limit, why they want to keep it, and I am more compassionate to your opinion. We are going to talk about that. Let's go a little bit further into this document. It's 17 pages linked in the video description, and I recommend you check it out. It gives you a good vision into kind of what the FCC is all about and also understanding a little bit of these legalese government wordings on some of this stuff. So this is docket number 16239, report and order and future, future, future further notice of proposed rulemaking. So I'm not going to reread the introduction because it's basically covered in the overage. What I want to get to is the background, which we kind of covered in the first video, but if you're coming into this brand new, I'm going to hit you with this background because the FCC did a good job here. Most amateur radio bands below 450 megahertz, so 70 centimeters and lower, right, are divided between radio teletype, they're calling it radio teletype, RIDI, and data subbands, right? So everything on the low side of those bands is data, radio teletype, Morse code, CW. It's not mentioned there, but it's implied. And phone and image subbands. So every amateur radio band, 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, is broken up where the low side is data and CW, and the high side is voice and image. Image being slow scan television, although that generally exists in very specific frequency spaces. The purpose of separating emission types into groups is to regulate the transmission of certain inharmonious emission types to different segments of the amateur radio service frequency bands. Additional standards and limitations applicable to each band or subband are set forth in section, and then it mentions 97. Part 97 is the rules for amateur radio. You can go download FCC Part 97 and familiarize yourself with it. I highly recommend you do. Very important as you're reading through these documents, you see this foot, this footnote, the line and everything below it, those are footnote references. You should probably avail yourself of those references as well. If they're taking the time to include them, there may be something in there that you might want to read, and we are going to reference them later as we go through this. Now, continuing a bit more in the background, the important bit is right here that we're basically not allowed to go beyond 300 baud rate below 28 megahertz, which is the 10 meter band. This limits how much data we can push, right? Data meaning 
text, you know, whatever. Potentially even files, hypothetically. And the reason for that goes all the way back to the baud rate limits when they were defined back in 1980, when the commission amended the limits so that ASCII signals, ASCII signal is a code used to represent a character, right? So a, a multi-digit code represents the letter A, for instance, right? And we use that to transmit characters over digital means, right? Either a cable, wireless means, whatever. So that they'd occupy no more spectrum, right? So this ASCII data, this potential over the air transmission, this hypothetical discussion would be no faster than what was capable at the time of a traditional, so traditional in 1980s times, radio teleprinter, right? Something that would like output a piece of paper with the text on it. Kind of outdated technology by today's standards, for sure. So fast forward from the 80s to 2013, the ARRL says, wait a second, this, this whole symbol rate limit has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. And they put out a petition basically saying, look, uh, this is crazy. Let's get rid of that and replace it with a bandwidth limit of 2.8 kilohertz. So there you go. There's where the 2.8 kilohertz comes from. It's existed in other forms, but don't worry, we'll talk about it. And then in 2016, which kind of is the reason why I made the video pointing at the FCC saying, hey, guys, the ball's in your court. Let's make this happen is because it's literally in their court. They said we should probably do this. In their own proposed document that came out in 2018, Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, they sought comment on eliminating the baud rate and amending Part 97 amateur radio rules of the commission's rules accordingly. So they basically said, hey, uh, tell us if you want us to do this or not. And then like, I don't know, maybe we'll do it. The commission has received over 1,200 comments on that docket, which it references here in the footnotes. And so now we are here today because the topic has not gone away. In fact, uh, people have become more entrenched in their uh, positions. And as digital modes have it advanced to the point where we're like raring to go on this. And as other countries look at us going like, what are you guys doing? Because, yeah, America is the only country that still has this erroneous body rate limit. Uh, everybody's kind of like looking around going, why is this still a thing? It, it's literally like like laws in towns, no dancing on a Sunday, right? Like to reference Footloose. Now, the rest of this document is going to highly reference that notice of proposed rulemaking, or as they're going to now refer to it as the NPRM. And let's go along a little bit of a ride, shall we? Because they actually are going to respond to people that are pro the removal of this, pro no bandwidth restriction at all, and those that are completely anti this. And I think they did a pretty decent job. In the report in order, we find that it is in the public interest to adopt the commission's tentative conclusion in the NPRM back in 2016, that removal of the limitation of the baud rate applicable to certain data emissions in the amateur band below 29.7 megahertz. In addition, consistent with the comments, we propose a bandwidth limitation. Okay, so there you go. FCC saying, yay, verily, I think we're going to make this happen. Now, an interesting thing with this baud rate limit, which is uh, somewhat frightening, but also just the way technology works, is we could find ourselves 10 years, 20 years from now, rehashing this discussion. Should we increase the size of the 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth to something else? It's possible. And in fact, the FCC concluded as much when it made its baud rate limit. Back in 1993, they said, as technology progresses, the rules may become unnecessarily restrictive, particularly with regard to the permissible baud rate. So they already saw a time when such a rule would have to be eclipsed because technology moved on. Now, in part nine, it says eliminating the baud rate limitation has wide support in the record. And then note the little number 32 there. That is a footnote reference. So if we scroll down to 32, you can see there's quite a number of citations here. One being, there is no technical reason for the symbol rate limit in 2019. And that was sent from Paul C. Steinhardt to the, from the Amateur Radio Safety Foundation to the FCC. We have another one. We are the only country. <laughs> we are the only country in the world that limits the symbol rate of amateur digital signals in this manner. A letter from David Seidel to the FCC as well. So you can see they're kind of building a case here for why they should move along and get away from this symbol rate. Now, something that was reminded to me when this whole when my first video went out is that increasing speed especially important when amateurs voluntarily assist during and after hurricanes forest fires and other disasters that's important to them to be able to send more data but what i had forgotten is that the fcc already allows 
certain hams the ability to receive a waiver to go faster to get rid of that baud rate limit. And those are the hams that are participating in volunteering after an emergency. So not only is the FCC on board with getting rid of this, they already have a workaround process to allow people to break the speed limit rules, if you will. So let's free this up for all hams and make it happen. I, I agree. I agree. Now, and what I feel is good form, item 10 here in the document, a few commenters oppose any rule change, arguing that the existing rules should be retained in order to protect access to the amateur bands by Morse code and other narrow band transmissions. While we recognize that there are varying uses of amateur bands, our decision today does not restrict or promote any particular use, meaning they're not using this uh, removal of restriction and bandwidth limitation to say, add a boy to the wide bandwidth modes. They're simply allowing those wide bandwidth modes to exist in the same sandbox, at least that's my interpretation. Amateur licensees engaging in Morse code transmissions will continue to be able to use the amateur bands for such transmissions. However, amateur frequencies are not assigned for the exclusive use of any station. Boy, people should be reminded of that, right? Rather, each station licensee and each control operator must cooperate in selecting transmitting channels and in making the most effective use of the amateur service frequencies. Thus, our existing rules to continue to promote sharing in the bands and ensure that wideband emissions do not exclude narrowband emissions modes, such as Morse code. Consistent with the support of most commenters in the record, our decision to eliminate the baud rate limitation provides amateur license with increased flexibility to engage. Now, you're going to hear the word innovation and experimentation that are the hallmarks of the amateur radio service many times throughout the document. But there is a footnote that exists right here in 38. So let's let's go check that out really fast. 38. Nicholas E. Leggett comments, arguing that before changing the rules, the commission should allow the amateur community to conduct on-air testing to demonstrate that broader bandwidth digital communications will not displace narrowband emissions. Dan White comments, arguing the, that wideband unlimited data uh, emissions, which we'll talk about unlimited data, will overwhelm and eliminate the ability of current narrowband operators to enjoy the radio service. That gets mentioned. Don't now, where does 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth come from? Because technically, we only need to get rid of the baud rate restriction, and we could just have as wide a bandwidth as we like, right? What would be the harm in that? Well, they talk about that here in item 12. The 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth limitation. The ARRL's petition requested that the commission amend its rules by replacing the baud rate limitation with a 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth limitation. Pull one off, put one on. The NPRM tentatively concluded that a specific bandwidth limitation for RIDI and data emissions in the amateur radio service bands was not necessary, meaning go nuts. We're going to go full auto bond with this bad boy. However, the NPRM observed that the 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth would accommodate HF data emissions that were in common use at the time. So interesting at the time. See, we're already we're already his, adding a, a historical benchmark to this, and which we note remain in use today. Okay, good. So we've got modes of communication that use 2.8 kilohertz, but we can just say it's kind of an arbitrary number, closely aligned somewhat with voice at 2.4 to 3 kilohertz, and some other data modes that are at 2.8, right? But it could be six for all we care, really. And they'll talk a little bit more about why there probably should be a maximum, but also that we really don't know what it is. The NPRM sought comment on its tentative conclusions based on our review of the record. We now agree with the ARRL and other commenters that 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth limit strikes the right balance between operational flexibility and spectrum reuse. Now here is probably my favorite section in all of this and, and should be the key takeaway from this entire document and the whole discussion. Although the commission tentatively concluded not to adopt a bandwidth limitation, right, as previously mentioned, commenters generally disagree with the tentative conclusion. Most commenters argue that if there is no baud rate limit and no bandwidth limit, a few wideband emissions could consume the bands, which cracks me up, the bands, all of them, not just one all of them, one guy, one data mode, all bands. 
and make sharing of the band more difficult during times of heavy use, like contesting or sprints or you name it, a DX expedition. Somebody, there could be a DX expedition on some island on A frequency and they're just having the time of their life working a pile up. And then somebody just starts calling out for wind link or who knows what, doing some digital mode on an adjacent signal or on top of the frequency. And it, there you go, they're completely shut off because they may not care, they may not know, they may not be following that aspect of it. Which brings back to item 13. We agree. We are persuaded by the weight of the record, meaning the amount of people, the comments, the feedback that they've received, in that this proceeding, without a baud rate or bandwidth limit, data stations using a large amount of spectrum for a single emission could do so to the detriment of simultaneous use by other stations using narrowband emissions modes like CW. For example, the ARRL states that ARRL and most footnote, 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 footnote stakeholders favor both deleting the symbol rate and replacing it with 2.8 individual symbol rate. Based on that record, we conclude that it is in the public interest to set a specific bandwidth limitation in certain amateur radio bands to better promote sharing among amateur radio licenses in these bands. So that's, I think, a good point to, to stop, to bookend it. I think you guys get the idea, right? There is one thing I want to mention, which I think is the important takeaway of all of this. Any future changes, any future anything. And here, item 17, I think, greatly sums up both the FCC's viewpoint of what our service is and how it should kind of be policed slash monitored slash ruled over, lorded over, or, you know, maintained. We note that some commenters argue for a rigid band plan, meaning like this little portion CW, this little portion's RIDI, this little portion is PSK31, like totally break it up, like really get in there and break it up, that the FCC should do this. That would allot portions of the bands for narrow band techniques with bandwidth such as 200 hertz, 500 hertz, CW, to protect and promote the use of narrow band operating modes. Okay, I can see why people make that argument, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that at the end here. While there is little consensus among these commenters on what the optimal bandwidth should be, how much should CW get? How much should PSK31 get? A number of commenters express concern that without bandwidth limits, specifically catered to narrow band applications, wider bandwidth digital modes will interfere with the spectrally efficient narrow band modes. I like that they give that little spectrally efficient CW. Yeah. Mind you, I, I respect it, right? These commenters argue that bandwidth in the RIDI and data subbands should be considerably narrow than the 2.8 kilohertz suggested by the ARRL to avoid interference to narrow band signals. We, the FCC talking here, decline to adopt a rigid band plan. We set a bandwidth limit of 2.8 kilohertz as a cap on emissions, which accommodates a wide variety of uses while not precluding narrowband ones. Our approach encouraged, here's that word again, experimentation and innovation and permits the use of the existing technologies available in other services. And here is the big thing. Moreover, we note that the ARRL maintains a voluntary band plan that outlines suggested portions of the band for certain applications as well as, as specifies limitations contained in our rules. So an extra level, a layer of a agreement amongst hands, right? We can self-police. We find that a community-driven, voluntary band plan that can rapidly be adjusted as technology changes and is consistent with our rules requiring footnote foot a lot of footnote cooperation and efficiency is preferable to a fcc rule-based mandatory band plan that requires regulatory action to adjust bingo thus we decline to adopt a mandatory band plan here well there you go now for everybody that does not want this, that does not want the baud rate limit removed, I hear you. You've reached out to me. I understand. I am sympathetic of your cause. I truly am. And as someone that's practicing to get better in CW, hopefully activate some POTAs, heck, maybe a contest in the future, I understand. And here is where I uh, will express my concern in all of this. I know, as someone who's worked digital modes, particularly things like WinLink, VAR-AC, 
maybe not so much ft8 because i think ft8 has become like the elephant graveyard of the digital spaces on the bands like nobody goes there we, we don't talk about that place that is for the ft8 people like people aren't running morse code on the ft8 frequencies people have vacated that space I don't know that there's many other modes that could do that in the future. Like if we kept doing that and, and personally just self-selecting to not use those areas, that could work. Uh, but I don't know how I feel about all that yet. But let, let me get back to the larger modes. So when I get inevitably, I think, 2.8 kilohertz capability for things like WinLink, I'm going to be able to transmit my emails and receive my emails much, much faster, which gets me off of the band, right? It gets me off as a user. I'm done right? But here's the kick. I know there are many times when you open up your WinLink Express app and you see that waterfall on Vara and it says frequency in use question mark or frequency may be in use or something along those lines. Please, digital operators, don't step on the people that are already making a cue. So if that's a CW operator and you could probably tell if you just turn the volume up on your radio, you'd know pretty well if it was. Please respect everybody that's on the bands. Please be a good steward of ham radio. Please follow the DX code of conduct in your everyday HF radio use. I cannot stress this enough times. And just apply it to your entire life on the bands. And I swear you'll have a great time. Anyway. I hope this was insightful. The best way you can tell me it was insightful is if you go to hamtactical.com, where we have um, merch for the channel. I'm just kidding. You don't have to show your appreciation there. But we do have a ton of cool merch that helps support this channel, as well as my podcast, The Ham Radio Crash Course, that I run with my wife. Spoiler, uh, she actually runs this website. But no, seriously, give me a, a thumbs up and sound off in the comments below. I do like to hear back from you. I have responded to many of you, even those who are very serious about this whole thing and really wanted to talk to me about it. I'm sympathetic. I understand. But uh, I think we got to move forward. So that's where I'll leave it. I'm KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you later. 7-3.